Our headline stories this hour. At his State of the Union address, President Putin reveals Russia has successfully tested a new nuclear-powered underwater drone. We'll bring you a unique video of the test. Also in the President's speech today. Well, our US partners had to be honest and straightforward with us. Russia does not pose a threat to anyone. Any actions we take are retaliatory, that is to say, in defence. Vladimir Putin stresses that Russia's actions in the international arena are purely defensive and that the Kremlin doesn't seek confrontation with its global partners. He also reiterated that Washington must be honest with Russia and not use, quote, trumped up accusations. Plus, in other news. The president said he did not believe that the North Koreans had the capability to hit us here, to which the president replied, I don't care, I believe Putin. A former acting director of the FBI levels a slew of incendiary claims at Donald Trump, including that the US leader could be a Russian asset. And the awards no self-respecting journalist would ever want to win. We report on a French ceremony celebrating the best fake news of the year. Live from Moscow to the world, this is your RT International. Good to have your company. My name is Yunin O'Neill. We begin with breaking news this hour. The Russian Defense Ministry has presented new images of a successfully tested underwater drone called Poseidon. Here is video of those tests on the new weapons system. It's just a few seconds long, but it is exclusive footage. News they had been successful came immediately after Vladimir Putin gave his annual States of the Nation address. The president said in his speech that the drone could be in full operation by spring. So that's within a number of months time it's been described by moscow as a planned modernization of military capabilities to counter hostile u.s moves here's what both the russian defense minister and russian leader had to say about poseidon earlier we conducted successful drills of a nuclear-powered cruise missile with unlimited range the burevesnik and also poseidon an underwater pilotless device with unlimited range we didn't say it before, but I can now announce that this spring we will launch this system's first nuclear submarine. We successfully completed offshore tests of the pilotless underwater Poseidon drone. Its crew has passed the necessary training. The main aim of this work is to provide military security for our country without increasing the current budget and without being involved in an arms race. Well, the brand new naval system was designed to counter U.S. Navy forces and Washington's efforts in creating a global missile defense primarily at sea. It's thought that the Russian systems unmanned underwater craft are small and difficult to locate and intercept. Poseidon is said to be several times cheaper than both the U.S. deployed missile defense and Navy strike groups while posing a serious threat to them. Let's go live now to Reiner Rupp. Reiner is a publicist and former German intelligence officer and a friend of the program to boot. Hi there, Reiner. As both the Russian president and the defense minister just said, the Poseidon tests were successful. Mr. Putin also saying that the weapon will be ready by springtime, so within uh, the coming months. What message do you think this is trying to send to the international community, especially Washington? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Russia for this achievement because it uh, definitely is a game changer in uh, the situation we had before. If we have read, for instance, uh, through the, uh, the through the American, U.S. American uh, nuclear posture review, and in between the lines, and this is also openly discussed in in think tank papers and. Uh, the, it's very clear that the United States has never given up the idea of absolute nuclear dominance with the ability to uh, use first strike nuclear decapitations. And uh, in, by having 
this capability they not necessarily want to give to uh, does not immediately imply that they would uh, like to do so mm -hmm. but they would have an immense a tremendous uh, kind of bargaining chip in all negotiations now uh, with the uh, with the, the modernization the russian government has been achieving and is still in the process of achieving it is quite clear that uh, this kind of idea the americans have uh, is uh, now obsolete and i think this is basically a, a serious shock going through the um, military planning establishment how are they going to react reiner then to this do you believe uh, well the uh, reaction to this uh, will will eventually be apart from the clustering now going on uh, and uh, accusing uh, Russia as warmonger. Uh, apart, apart from this blustering going on, the eventual outcome will be that you have to, the Americans have to come back to the negotiating table and to, uh, to uh, reintroduce some kind of element of, uh, of, uh, of, of balanced uh, strategic forces as it was more or less before. Just from your knowledge of, because it's very new this of course, but just from what you know of Poseidon, the system is said to nullify U.S. efforts in creating a global missile defense network. Is that so? Can Washington avoid this system? Um, well, first of all, that's too early to say, sure. but uh, from what I've been, uh, what I know so far about Poseidon and what I heard so far from American uh, reactions to it, from scientific uh, uh, um, commentators, uh, it is uh, impossible, impossible to, uh, to to counteract. And it's basically, if the Americans, I mean, it's basically what uh, what what uh, President Putin said. Uh, uh, we we might be dying be dying first, but this is is martyrs. But uh, you will regret regret dying. Second, because the Americans would not have anything to stop this uh, weapon as a retaliation force. Yeah, certainly a big achievement for the defense industry here in Russia. Reiner Rupp, publicist and former German intelligence officer, we thank you for your take this hour. Thank you. Well, despite President Putin's speech having a major domestic focus, that hour and a half speech earlier today, Wednesday. Foreign policy was unavoidable, as we've just been hearing with our guests, given the current climate. The Russian leader looked to underline that Moscow is not seeking confrontation. It was said more than once. Ilya Petrenko breaks the speech down, and that in particular for us now. I'll start with how the Russian president got to the final part of his speech, where he elaborated on America and its allies, plus how Russia gets along with them. He said that he was obliged to bring this issue up after Washington tore up the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. The Donald Trump administration insisted on that after the idea first surfaced in Washington last year. Mr. Putin called on the American leadership to be honest about the actual reasons why they were leaving the treaty. And the Russian president believes that these reasons are Russia and America being obliged to limit their missile arsenals while other countries not being put in that position. Here's what else we heard from Mr. Putin on that. Well, our U.S. partners had to be honest and straightforward with us. They should not have used trumped-up accusations and allegations to unilaterally withdraw from it, like they did in 2002, which they did in an honest way when they pulled out of the IBM treaty. I felt it was done the wrong way, but at least they did it in a straightforward manner. But how do they act, in fact? They violate everything, then find excuses to put the blame on someone. Moreover, they mobilize their allies, who oink along with them. So while addressing the lawmakers in some way, Mr. Putin addressed the American leadership as well. And the gist was, Russia is not a threat for America and its allies, but it could become one if these countries start being aggressive against Moscow. 
Definitely serious. The Russian president began to talk what his country would be forced to do an R&D, an actual military deployment, if the Western military expansion continues. Russia will be forced to produce weapons that can be used not only against those territories where direct threats originate from, but also against the places where the decision makers are located. Let the US take into account the range and speed of our prospective weapons, and then they can make a decision that might create an additional threat to our country. However, we kept hearing it time and again that the bear only roars when someone attacks it. Anything that Russia would choose to do will only be in response to hostile actions and the Russian president still believes that the way to sort out all the global issues, the best way to do that is to make steps towards each other, positive steps. Yeah, a lot spoken about in that 90 minutes. Let's get the take of Chris Bambri, political analyst, live on the programme. Now, Chris, we will get into a few specifics in a bit. What did you take away from it? What was the main points, do you think? Well, I think while, of course, we're concentrating on the whole issue of Russia responding to uh, the threats uh, that it believes comes from the United States, the first hour was about domestic policies. and. Mm. Putin was promising an increasing living standards for the population. Living standards, of course, have been stagnating. His increase in the retirement age is unpopular. And I think he was offering the Russian people some, uh, some hope that living standards were going to go up. And I, I also think that against a background of the Eurozone economy going towards recession, Chinese growth and American growth slowing, increasing domestic demand is also an imperative in that situation to help the economy. So so I think the first thing to say is, is the, the, the bulk of the speech was actually to the Russian people about better days potentially ahead. No, absolutely. And there was more than in previous years this year, certainly. Um, the last 10, 15 minutes, though, foreign policy, defence, a lot was fit into that period, Chris. Um, I'm not sure if you just saw us earlier, we were speaking about that new underwater nuclear drone. He yes. was also speaking about the avant-garde hypersonic glider as well um, and pride in, in able to, to create things like that. But now headlines, I'm just seeing, I've just been scanning through headlines of Putin threatening the US with new weapons. They're appearing in the media. Is, is that an example of really of how a message can be twisted and used to misinform public perceptions? Because this is done as he's pointed out multiple times in reaction to the US pulling out and trying to get the, the weapons race going up again. He, he said that more than once. I mean, I think there's two elements here. There was the section which uh, you, in the previous package uh, your correspondent alluded to where it sounded certainly confident, maybe threatening when he talked about these new, uh, new, uh, new weapons and said that if pushed, Russia would retaliate. But the bulk of the time he was saying he wanted to come back to the negotiating table attacking America for tearing up this, uh, this, this nuclear treaty. And I think we know that while this is a strengthening of Russia's arsenal, nuclear arsenal, that America has got overwhelming superiority. And therefore, my take on it is, is he's unveiling these weapons in an effort to say, look, we have these things, more or less, why don't you come back to the negotiating table, why do this? And above all, to say, you have to stop this offensive expansion of NATO into former USSR territories. This is the crucial question, I think, for, for the whole Russian leadership. Russia feels as if it's surrounded now by NATO and American bases and by the expansion of NATO eastwards and the deployment of NATO forces into the Baltic states mm. uh, and into, uh, into East, uh, Eastern Europe. And this is what I think the, the thing is, is that what Russia wants is to 
America to come back to the negotiating table and discuss this. So my take on this is really, if you like, it's a plea to America to come back to the days of negotiation and not take these unilateral actions of simply tearing up treaties, which you could sense his anger about yeah, in the well, speech. He, he did stress that, the, that Russia would only ever act in a defensive manner and never be an aggressor. We can, in fact, listen to, to the exact words.